How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I wanted to share with you a test that I have been doing comparing different stabilizers for the RV. Stabilizers for when you have your RV set up. So when people are moving around, walking around, if somebody's laying down, you don't feel that shake and wobble inside of the RV. There's less movement inside of the RV when it's set up and you have more stability inside the RV. So the stabilizers we're going to compare today, we're going to have the x chocks They are very popular amongst RVers. We're going to have a homemade set, something that's just really inexpensive that just anybody could have on their RV. We're going to have the steady fast and I was going to do a tripod but that's only for fifth wheels and years ago we did a test and steady fast blew the tripod out of the water. So we're going to stick with those three main ones, the x chocks the homemade and the steady fast. Now the tests we're gonna do are some standard motions through the RV, closing a door, uh, walking through the RV, some controlled movements on the RV to be able to measure how much the, the RV moves between these different stabilizers. So the way these stabilizers work, for instance, with the x chocks this is for tandem axle RVs, like travel trailers and fifth wheels, where you have the two axles on there. So you take the x chock and you put it in between the two tires, you tighten it down, and it puts a, a force out, putting pressure against those tires so that it's going to lock those in so you don't have any movement and it's supposed to help stop rotation and stop movement inside of the RV. These are pretty popular I believe because they're really easy to use. There's nothing to install. You just tighten them down when you get there. You loosen them when you're ready to go and uh, they're just easy to handle. Now the other one we're going to be looking at is a homemade system. So this is just a couple of two by fours. We just used a scrap piece of two by four. We cut it in half at a 45 degree angle so it can rest nicely against the RV. We put a Eyelet down at the bottom, we measured up seven inches, drilled through, put that eyelet in there, and then we have a ratchet strap that connects these two so that we have these two by fours coming out at an angle, contacting the ground, giving us added stabilization inside of the RV. It gives us that angle of those two by fours and that pressure of the ratchet strap is what gives that stabilization. Now the last one on our list is the Steady Fast. This one has three points of stability in the RV. Uh, we have three points to tighten down. So in the back, we have a cross brace that goes from left to right. We have one in the front that goes from front to back. Then we have a third brace on the front landing gear that goes from left to right. This one by far is the fastest to use once it's installed on the RV. So once the RV is level and the slides are out, I just go around and tighten up these three locations and it locks in the stabilization because it's connected to the frame down to the bottom of the leg in three different spots. Now I'll put links down in the description to the different stabilizers that we're talking about in this video and that we're testing. So let's dive right into the test. So number one, I started off with kind of just the, the blank slate. I wanted to see how much movement we had if we had zero stabilizers affecting the way that the RV is sitting. So we had a tape measure set up in the back with a camera set up. Uh, we set up a cup of water on the inside of the RV. We can call that like our our Jurassic Park T-Rex test. And then one thing in the back of the RV that I'm going to have a camera on so that you can see the movement is the pole for being able to bring down the shades in the back. I noticed that that moved quite a bit depending on which stabilizers I had on. So without any stabilizers, I saw the movement inside of the RV. When I would close the door, it was about a 16th of an inch with a, a bounce back. And then walking through, you can see the movement. And then you can see as I shift my weight inside the RV, it's about a, an eighth of an inch. And then the controlled movement that I'm gonna have for each of these tests, it was about an eighth of an inch for the movement. Now, I'm not just trying to shove the side of the RV and see which one can handle a shove from the side. I'm trying to do things that are more real world RVing scenarios and things that I can replicate and duplicate for each of these tests. So one more thing that I did do is I asked my wife just to be inside of the RV to observe how much the RV moved and see which one that she would prefer. And I didn't tell her which stabilizer I was putting on next. So uh, we started off with the x chocks She didn't know that, but we installed those, tightened them down and we ran the same test. So you can see when I closed the door, I still had about a 16th inch of movement. Uh, you can see as I'm walking through the RV, it's very similar, shifting weight, not much change, and the control movement, we're still at an eighth of an inch. And she said that it didn't feel any better at all. There was, there was no improvement. It felt the same and it actually measured out the same as well. 
So the next one on our list is I moved to the steady fast. And then we began the test. I closed the door and we had less than a 30 second of movement. And then walking through the RV, you can see a little bit of movement, shifting my weight from left to right. You can see about a less than a 16th inch of movement. And then the controlled movement that I had inside that I did on every single one, we had about a 30 second of an inch of movement. So really good improvement with the steady fast. Now the next one on our list is to test the homemade one. And I was really curious about this because it was so inexpensive. We just bought the eyelets. We already had the two by four and the ratchet strap. So we're, we're talking five, six bucks to be able to put this thing together. So if you're buying all the materials, it might be around uh, 15, maybe $20 to be able to put this together on your RV. So in the test, closing the door, we see that we had uh, just over a 30 second of an inch of movement. Walking through the RV, you can see how much that moves. Uh, when I'm shifting my weight from left to right, we have three 30 seconds of a movement inside there. And the control movement that I have inside the RV, that was again, three 30 seconds of an inch. So it definitely made an improvement on stabilizing the RV, but it didn't do quite as good as the steady fast. But you could do multiple of these. So this was just one set in the front of the RV. Uh, so if you did one in the front, one in the back, it would add, I, I believe, a tremendous amount of stability. Now my wife said, as far as the inside of the RV, she would put this as number two. It wasn't quite as good as the steady fast, but there was a significant difference to the stability inside of the RV. Now, before we go over some of the pros and cons, I wanted to do one more test. So I ran that from having the stabilizer, the homemade one in the front, I wanted to have it in the back to see if there was any difference. So starting off, you can see that closing the door, we had less than a 30 second. Uh, shifting from side to side, we had just under a 16th and the control movement inside the RV, we also had just under a 16th of an inch. So you can see that moving the stabilizer and where we had it changed the performance of it. So it did much better in the back of the RV. And it kind of makes sense because we don't have any uh, stabilizer jacks that go in the back of the RV. So it's almost working as a little bit of a lever on the RV. So putting those back there added a significant amount of stability. So if I had those in the back, and in the front that it would do a pretty good job. Now I didn't spend too much time making these. It was more of the function, but you could paint them. You can make them look a little bit better. Uh, but one thing to note is they do stick out a little bit from the RV, just the nature of it, trying to get that angle because uh, that angle is important to have. So having that angle makes them stick out a little bit. So that is a little bit of a tripping hazard. And just comparing them to the steady fast as, as far as speed and setup, it is one more thing that you have to store and have somewhere on the inside of the RV when you're traveling or in the bed of the truck. And then you do have to set them up, run the strap across. So it does take a little bit more time, but it is very quick to be able to set those up. The steady fast just really shines in this area because you don't have to move anything. You don't have to get anything out. You don't have to set it up. You just grab the handle that's under there. No special tool needed. It's easy to tighten those down. It's easy to loosen them up when you're ready to go. So uh, you don't have to store anything anywhere and it's just really simple to set up. There's really no other way to say it. We did actually run one more test where we combined the steady fast and the homemade system and it brought those numbers down even more. When I closed that door, it was like, less than a 64th of an inch walking in there was there wasn't even much to measure you couldn't even hardly see it and then the shifting in there and the control it was less than a 30 second of an inch it was it was hard to measure so those two combined was a very stable setup so that's kind of the rundown of each of these and how they performed we didn't get much performance out of the x chocks the steady fast has performed like we've been experiencing over the years and the homemade one came in as a surprise that it gave so much stability for the cost that it is. So with these results, it begs the question of what system will we go with? So we're just gonna go with the steady fast. If we wanted maximum stability, we would add these homemade ones on here, but uh, the, the combination of how much we move and we wanna be able to set up quickly and tear down quickly, we just don't want to have to set up the additional stabilizer. So maximum stabilization if we did the homemade, but we're just gonna be going with the steady fast. Now there is another option that we didn't test here is we could put an additional stabilizer back here but those get pretty expensive. We could go with the less expensive C stand in the back here that gives us more of that 45 degree angle. But I would bet that it doesn't give us as much stability as this does. But it is an option, but we're just gonna be sticking straight with the steady fast. Now, the last thing that I should mention is the cost of each of these. So if you made two different sets of those homemade stabilizers, probably $20 a set. So 
$40 all in to be able to stabilize the RV. The Steady Fast is around $260 to be able to have that for your entire RV. And then if the x chocks we're looking at $75 for the pair of them. So there is a considerable difference in cost and uh, being able to, to weigh that out uh, might help you make a decision. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope this video helps you guys uh, decide what stabilizer you might want or if it's not really an issue for something that you would want for your RV. So uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.